This is Twit. All right, so Twitter is launching a new effort uh, to what it calls responsible machine learning. And I mean, this is this is such a hot topic right now with, you know, not just Twitter, but Facebook, you know, all the, the major uh, big tech companies are are really dealing with this kind of reaction to their artificial intelligence systems, the machine learning systems, uh, bias, all sorts of things. So Twitter's launched this effort to see how its own systems affect its users uh, in, I'd say, I was going to say positive and negative ways, but really, I think the report, it really focuses on kind of like the negative ways that it, that that can happen. And joining us to talk about it uh, is Carissa Bell from Engadget. Welcome to the show, Carissa. Hello. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you bet. It's great to get you on finally. Uh, so first of all, let's talk a little bit about the problem here. Uh, obviously, Twitter's had its fair share of problems. So is Facebook, but this is a Twitter's kind of effort. So what um, what are they kind of, what what is the preface to this report and to this effort that they have going on? Yeah, I mean, uh, like you just said, this is kind of an issue that I think has come up throughout the social media industry, you know, with, you know, with things like um, misinformation or political advertising or kind of like all these big issues affecting social media platforms right now. Like we've kind of, you know, heard some, a lot of concerns about how these automated systems are maybe built for one thing and then it turns out they're doing something else. And I think there's kind of this increasing sense that social media users should really have a better understanding of how these systems actually work and what it is that they're doing. So I think that's kind of the, like the big picture preface of sort of why Twitter and other companies might want to look at these issues. Right, right. So then, so then as they kind of dive into this and I'm not even aware of like how long they envisioned this, this, to take place, like what the what the the time horizon is on something like this, but what exactly are they going to be taking a look at, and um, kind of how are they planning on on conducting this study to be sure that they're looking at the right things? Yeah, you know, I think it's that's a great question. I think it's fairly early with a lot of this work, um, so we don't necessarily have a ton of details on the specifics. What we do know is that they're going to get a group of people from across different areas of the company, um, research, data scientists, engineers, product folks, people who work on safety issues, um, who all kind of form these groups that kind of study these uh, specific issues. And I think the idea is that like each of these teams can kind of bring their own expertise and understanding of their own problems to kind of look at these things holistically. Um, in terms of what they're going to look at, they identified a couple areas to start. I think eventually they kind of want to uh, look at many more, but the things that they've mentioned so far is their image cropping algorithm, which is something that's come up. Um, people have, have pointed out that it, it seems as if the uh, Twitter tends to crop the pre image preview so that it will show white faces more often um, than other kinds of, than other people. Um, so they said they're going to look at that. They're also going to look at uh, various ways they recommend content. They want to see if there is a bias in terms of political ideologies or um, in terms of uh, racial bias and like if they're recommending uh, content from, from some groups, people more than others. So those are the, the issues that they've identified so far. Okay. Wow. That's a, that, and that's a great start. <laughs> um, so, then, so then it sounds like this report... Like it sounds like this a report like this could be beneficial for you know companies outside of Twitter, but is really meant to focus Twitter on what exactly it can do to correct or I don't know address some of these issues in its own machine language systems, and uh, it, it's 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 a report that's designed to help them kind of fix certain things and not just not just about discovery. In other words, this is really about addressing Twitter's uh, process effectively. Yeah, I think that's right. I think they want to, you know, learn, they want to, you know, actually have a clear understanding of kind of how these systems might be biased. Um, another mm -hmm. important piece is they actually want to, they're going to make their findings public. So, you know, we can get a better understanding of it. Um, you know, researchers outside the company can kind of look at what they're doing. And, you know, I think in some cases we might see this kind of actually impact specific Twitter features. Like you can see that with the, the image cropping feature, for example, mm -hmm. like maybe they could tweak 
the underlying software in some way to you know make it more fair or something like that. I think in other cases, it might be something that they more kind of think about going forward as sort of like a, a big picture learning that might kind of help them do better the next time around. Yeah. Yeah. Um, interesting. So what about the kind of the, the further reaching effects of this sort of study? Like obviously Twitter is doing this, uh, because they have a, you know, they have a, a there's they're interested in in helping themselves kind of maneuver through this this challenge which is very top of mind right now but what kind of inter interactivity could a report like this have with companies outside of twitter you mentioned that they're making it public um it really it just it strikes me that a report like this could be incredibly beneficial for everyone to participate in and not just be locked into twitter mm -hmm. I don't, I, I don't know. I, I don't know how something like this expands out to companies like Facebook. Maybe Facebook already has its own uh, process or its own report discovery uh, in, in the process right now. But um, what kind of sharing might Twitter do to encourage that? Have they mentioned anything about kind of working with uh, with other companies uh, on a larger effort in this case? You know, I don't, I don't think they have specifically, but I think it's a, a good question. Um, and I think it like you kind of suggested, it kind of speaks to like the sort of bigger uh, push right now for people who, you know, people want to understand how these companies operate. They want to understand yeah. um, how their products are affecting us. So I think that even if, um, say, a company like Facebook, for example, I think they might approach this kind of problem very differently than Twitter would. Um, but if Twitter were to, you know, when Twitter does kind of make these findings public and kind of talk about what they learn and if they do, make some changes, I think that maybe could create some some pressure within the industry for other people to kind of uh, do something on this front, you know, if, if you see uh, one company doing it, then, you know, and this is something that also, uh, you know, people in, in Congress have talked about, they've talked about whether or not they should actually legislate um, AI fairness or uh, require companies to kind of conduct audits or something like that. So I think there, there generally is kind of growing pressure um, on these platforms to, you know, to, to think about these issues. Mm, yeah, that's a, that's a point I hadn't considered about this. Uh, you know, obviously I'm sure Twitter is doing this because they, they truly want to improve, uh, the network, but there's also a kind of a self-interest perspective in the sense that doing something like this ahead of regulation, uh, could <laughs> potentially, you know, change the kind of regulation that might, uh, be deemed necessary, uh, down the line. So it could be, uh, you know, kind of self-serving uh, in that regard. You mentioned in your article uh, something that I had read very briefly about in the past, but then I, I was reminded of it when you wrote about um, CEO Jack Dorsey's idea of a marketplace for algorithms. I thought this was just kind of an interesting uh, side tangent, definitely related. Explain, explain what that is uh, to the best of your knowledge. Like what is a marketplace <laughs> for algorithms? How is that beneficial for users? And I, I mean, how would it tie into something like this? Yeah, um, that's, that's a good question. Uh, Jack Dorsey has talked about, you know, his desire to kind of like create a, a decentralized standard for social networks and you know twitter has this other kind of project called blue sky where they're they're starting to explore how this might work it's extremely early um and i think this this issue this thing of the, the marketplace for algorithms is sort of related to that um i think the way it might work is like you know right now with twitter i think for example you have your home timeline you can choose either to look at things chronologically or you can use Twitter's ranking algorithm, which I think sorts it, you know, based on what it thinks will be most important to you. Um, so right now, like you have those two options. You know, maybe if there was some kind of marketplace, then third-party developers or others could create their own kind of ranking system for how they want content to be surfaced to you. So, you know, maybe that's like you only see sports first, or I don't know something along those lines. And then people can kind of look at those options and choose like, oh, I want, um, you know, I want to have this person's, you know, uh, breaking algorithm influencing my feed or, you know, have, have it, you know, from some other developer. I think the idea is that it's, you have these like third parties who also can kind of create these and then the users can choose, pick and choose which ones they want to see. Yeah. So often in big tech, uh, you know, companies offerings, these 
algorithms, you know, in air quotes, because algorithms, you know, like AI seems to cover a whole lot of different things. Um, it's like the secret sauce of how these networks are powered. And so often it seems like they do uh, whatever they can to kind of hide. I don't know, maybe hides the wrong word, but make sure that their secret sauce is their secret sauce because it largely drives the personality or the, you know, the approach of that particular social network. So I think the idea of like democratizing or opening up uh, almost, almost like, uh, you know, these companies have my data and I want access to my data. It's my data. Okay, here you go. It's kind of the same with algorithms. I think that's a pretty powerful idea. I'd be really curious to see how that, you know, how that addresses things like this. Maybe it affects it for the better. Um, one thing that strikes me also about this is that technology companies in general are doing a lot let's say after the fact, <laughs> something bad happens and then, they, then they're looking at it and addressing it uh, after the fact. Instead of kind of getting out and, and really learning about the ways that these things can be, be used or abused or go sideways ahead of time, um, what, I mean, are, are these technology companies doing work effectively in risk assessment as far as that's concerned? And I mean, it really seems like they can improve on that. But what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, that's the, the big question here. I think, um, you know, I think it's definitely something that they're thinking about more than they used to. But I mean, the fact that we're seeing these kinds of initiatives, I mean, it's obviously like there's they're not doing a, a good enough job um, in terms of anticipating uh, how, the, how their products might end up actually being used. I think that, you know, it's we've, what we've seen in the past is like they've they've been very reactive, you know, where right. something uh, maybe something comes up and it's you know a researcher or an advocacy group or someone else or a journalist points out that you know they're recommending something that they probably shouldn't be recommending or their systems are you know behaving in a way that is not actually good for their users and we see that these companies have gotten very good at like reacting to those changes when they become public and they get, they get a lot of public pressure from it. Um, but, you know, we don't necessarily always see them actually taking a proactive approach and, and kind of looking at this ahead of time. And so I think now we're starting to see them at least thinking about doing that or trying to, mm -hmm. you know, figure out how that works and, you know, develop some kind of framework for that. I think that's definitely a step in the right direction. I don't think that we should expect, you know, huge changes overnight. I think, you know, especially... When you talk about Twitter, they're not a company that's known for moving particularly quickly when it comes to um, developing new processes or or products. So I think it's it's still going to be uh, a slow roll. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. I, I would guess. agree. But that's but that's good news that there is at least some attention it, it being paid to the the effects that are you know are possible, the, the potential effects uh, down the line instead of always being so reactive. It's just, it's interesting to me, these companies have insane amounts of money like that should be as, you know, equally important. And uh, I have to imagine they have the resources to do it. So I'm happy to hear that they are.